Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. It is just me here today. Brian is actually working. I have the day off. We're hosting uh, Brian's birthday party here in the garden this weekend, which is why we have this big, beautiful table here. Um, and I have a lot of chores to get done. One of them is planting our seedlings in the ground. Um, they're so big, it feels weird to call them seedlings at this point. They're basically plants. Um, but these are the things that we grew from seed this year. So I'm excited to share some of our tips with you um, and also show you what we'll be, where we'll be putting them in the garden. So we grew quite a few different varieties from seed this year. Um, however, a lot of those still aren't ready yet, but these foxgloves and delphiniums are more than ready to get into the ground. They have really, really massive roots on them and they're outgrowing their containers quickly. So I am going to plant them today before we have Brian's birthday party tomorrow. So this is our second year growing plants from seed indoors. We started most of them around mid-January. Um, and last year, our, our crops were okay. Um, they weren't that big, but they still all bloomed for us. They produced throughout the season. Um, and some of them even went to seed. And we have little seedlings coming up out in uh, the garden this year, which is really cool. But this year, we wanted to change up the game. We wanted to have healthier seedlings. We wanted to have bigger plants, uh, more established plants that can go into the ground and not have to get as much supplemental watering. So um, here's what we did this year. So first thing we did was we changed up our light situation. Last year, we had these little bitty skinny grow lights um, and they just weren't very powerful. We didn't have them as close as they needed to be from the start, so our plants were very leggy. Um, and it just, it wasn't great. We kind of had to limp them along until we could get them outside. Um, it worked, they bloomed, but it just, it wasn't a great experience. So this year we bought new uh, LED grow lights on Amazon. I will link them down below. Um, I got three of them and we just kind of rigged them up on a shelving unit that we already had. We didn't buy any kind of big fancy uh, grow kit from anywhere. We just got the lights, put them on shelving that we already had, and you can see it worked. Um, so the plants took really well to these lights. They have adjustment where you can adjust the power. So we started them very low, and as the plants got bigger, you can increase it um, a little bit. And it was amazing. Um, the second tip that I think makes the biggest difference in your seedling production is fertilizer. So last year, because it was our first time, we were afraid of burning the plants. We did not fertilize any of our seedlings. Um, the only thing I did is when I put them out in the garden, I put a little bit of biotone in the hole to help the roots get going. But by that point, they were all hardened off um, and they were basically plants. So this year, I decided to use some of the Espoma Organic Indoor Fertilizer. You may see this also listed as uh, grow instead of indoor. They both come in a green container, exact same composition. Um, and what I did was I waited for the seedlings to get their second set of true leaves. So when seedlings emerge, they will have little grow leaves that will actually eventually fall off of the plant. Uh, the grow leaves come and then after that, they start to put on the true leaves. So I waited until the third full set, which is their second set of true leaves. And I went in with half strength fertilizer. I used like a little eyedropper to get down into each hole, make sure I was giving um, the same amount to every single plant. And after I did three or four applications of the half strength fertilizer, I went back with full strength. And they have been getting those ever since. Um, they have gotten bigger and bigger every week. They are loving it. And we didn't have a single plant burn or show signs of stress from the fertilizer. So I highly, highly recommend um, Espoma. If you can't find it near you, um, ask your local garden center if they have something similar. You wanna make sure it's uh, liquid so that you can control the dosage. And if you do use this, make sure you give it a good shake before you use it because it is organic, we do have sediment that will settle at the bottom of the container. So now that you've gotten our tips about our seedlings, let's talk about these plants. So I have four different kinds of foxgloves here. I do wanna point out a couple of things. Most foxgloves are a biennial. We've heard perennial before, but biennial may be a new term. 
biennial means that they bloom the second year. So the first year, most foxgloves will just get big, beautiful foliage like you see here. However, there are new varieties of foxgloves that will bloom the first year, and that's what I have here. So I have Dalmatian peach, which will be a light peach color. Um, we did grow, the, grow these last year, so I have some pictures I can show on the screen. Uh, we have Camelot cream, white, and lavender. So I have three kinds of Camelot. Um, and those have like the little dots on the inside of the little bell. Very excited to put these out into the garden. Um, some, of them, some of these are going to go into our moon garden that you saw us plant in our most recent series. So that's the foxgloves. Uh, let me show you how big this is. Look at that. Isn't that insane? That's as big as my head. These are, you can tell by the roots, they need to get in the ground. They are outgrowing their container quickly. Um, so very excited to see how quickly these bloom this year too. Um, the, other, the other varieties that I have here are all delphiniums. So this one here in the front is Magic Fountains White. Um, these will come out all white with a black center, which I think will be a really cool pop and contrast. And then this one here is White King Delphinium. You can see they are droopy. I need to start staking these. These get four feet tall <laughs> at maturity. I can't even, I can't even pick, imagine what that's going to look like. Um, you can see also the Delphiniums have been in their can for too long because this one is already starting to put out its blooms. Um, and it's really branching a lot shouldn't do that. It should be, you know, a, a stalk straight up with flowers. Okay, let's go get these in the ground. All right, everyone, I got all of the seedlings in the ground. I did decide to plant one extra thing that I did not talk about, so let me show it to you. So these here are Porto Spineless Cardoons. I have three dotted in this bed, and these will get really, really big, and they'll kind of fill in this area. 
Um, but these are basically artichokes. And if you don't harvest the artichoke, they will have a beautiful purple bloom come up in the center. Um, from what we've read, I think that they will bloom the second year, so we'll just get foliage this year. But it's still some nice texture in the bed, and it's really kind of like spiky, and it has a little bit of an icy tone to it. Um, so I'm excited to see these fill in. We grew, I think, eight of these from seed, and we've kind of given them away to different people. Um, yeah, we've never grown these before, so I'm very interested to see how they progress, especially in our humid North Carolina summers. All right, guys, I think that is going to be it for this video. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna get all of this stuff watered in, make sure the soil settles really nicely so we don't have any air pockets. Um, I do have some more seedlings that I'll be planting probably in another week or two once we're uh, in some more consistent heat. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing our seedlings getting planted out today. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.